Robert, I've always wanted to know whether God exists like so many people. And as I was trained in science, when I was trained, design arguments for God were quite out of vogue and kind of ridiculed. Mm -hmm. But in the last couple of decades, more mm -hmm. sophisticated de design arguments, not from biology, mm -hmm. but from physics and Correct. cosmology have come back into vogue. Why mm -hmm. is that? The reason that uh, design arguments have come back into vogue is because of universal constants and what we now have very precisely determined to be approximately 20 of them anyway. Um, and these 20 constants are like um, uh, numbers, they're values, but they fit into the equations of physics. But they really, you know, the, the equations of physics describe the laws of nature. So these numbers are these values, which could be minimums, it could be maximums, it could be frequencies, could be ratios, they could be parameters of interaction and so mm -hmm. forth. Mm -hmm. These uh, numbers, these values are actually controlling all of the laws of physics. And right now they can be fairly precisely known. Um, we do know, you know, the speed of light seems to be uh, the highest velocity attainable in the universe. It's invariant in every reference frame, seemingly so. Uh, we know, for example, Planck's constant, if you study a little bit of quantum mechanics, uh, Hubble's constant for the overall rate of expansion of the universe. I think uh, people also have a, a good idea of the constants associated with the four forces in our universe. So the electromagnetic force, for example, has three constants, the mass of a proton, the mass of an electron, and the electromagnetic charge, or the gravitational constant, which everybody kind of learns about in physics 101, or uh, also uh, uh, the strong nuclear force coupling constant or the weak force constant. Well, anyway, there's about 20 of these constants. Mm -hmm. And the odd thing is, is um, at the Big Bang, they, they really could have had other values. In fact, they could have had an exceedingly wide range of values, higher or lower. The problem tends to be when, um, uh, in, in order to get a life form to develop in the, in the universe, you need those constants to have pretty much the values that they have. And since they could have had any value at the Big Bang, uh, practically, I mean, within a very wide range, the odds seem exceedingly, exceedingly low that those constants would have been the ones, the values of the constants would have been precisely the ones necessary for life form. Let me just give a few examples. I mean, for example, in the gravitational constant, the weak force constant, if they were one part in 10 to the 50, higher or lower, that's a very small fraction, right? A decimal point, 49 zeros and a one. Higher or lower, either of those two constants, the universe would have been continuously exploding in its expansion which would have prohibited the development of life forms, or alternatively, scrunched into a black hole where you're approaching almost infinite density, which of course would prohibit the, the development of a life form. Because for a life form, you need stars, you need stars to create uh, he uh, heavy elements, and then you need planets to form, and then exactly. this whole process. Exactly, and so either alternative would, would really be fatal for any life form uh, of any kind. Mm -hmm. Life form is gonna require some sort of complexity uh, which is going to mean a multiplicity, a singularity would be bad, or a black hole would be bad. And of course, you need certain kinds of conditions, so continuous explosion would be bad. Uh, similarly, you know, if your strong nuclear force coupling constant were just 2% higher, uh, you would have no hydrogen in the universe. Okay. So there are two so counter-arguments to yeah. that that yeah. scientists would give. Sure. Uh, the first, and perhaps uh, less powerful argument, mm -hmm says that uh, the way we're defining life forms uh, is, uh, is maybe a, a, a carbon uh, biased. Uh, the mm -hmm. way uh, we're doing the analysis varies only one of those constants at a time. Mm -hmm. But if you vary multiple at a time in some combinations, maybe they would counteract mm -hmm. each other. So there could be different combinations. So that, that's mm -hmm. one argument. It's, mm -hmm. it's the weaker one. Right. I mean, the, the obvious response is, um, you would have to also fine tune all the other constants very precisely um, in order to get life forms to develop from that uh, scenario. So normally when people state those arguments, they normally state, um, you know, the argument in terms of what is, um, you know, the range that's permissible. So one part in 10 to the 50th. Well, if you change the other constants, you'd still probably have to get the both the gravitational weak force constant, right, um, into 
a similar range for another set of numbers, right. which would be highly improbable, exceedingly improbable. So it can't vary by one part in 10 to the 50th. Maybe it would be slightly less or slightly more, but the, the, the key fact is you'd still have to get it within a very, very tight range. And so that's normally how the constants are, are evaluated. With respect to carbon-based, actually that's not really the case because uh, honestly, um, carbon-based life or non-carbon-based life, continuous explosion of the universe would be very bad for anything that's trying right. to develop into a complexified right. structure. Right. Right. <laughs> so, All right, let's go to the more serious yeah. uh, argument yeah. against the, uh, the specialness yeah. of, of our universe, and right. that is, I'm sure you know, multiple universes. Mm -hmm. And that is not a theory that has come through uh, people who are trying to um, uh, eliminate a potential creator from designing the universe, but rather th from the the uh, outgrowth of, of of pure physics, of mm -hmm. the necessity of yeah. to explain the how this universe came about, uh, and that multiple universes seem to be a necessary uh, part of explaining how this universe works, mm -hmm. and that once you have multiple universes, particularly mm -hmm. as they become um, uh, eternal and chaotic in their generation, mm -hmm. and you have an enormous number, an enormous number of universes, potentially mm -hmm. an infinite number or virtually infinite number, mm -hmm. th then, then virtually anything can happen. And because mm -hmm. we're in a universe that we exist, we think we're special, mm -hmm. uh, because if on all the other universes that we don't exist, <laughs> we're not right, able right, to ask right. that question. Uh, yeah, no, it's a, it's a perfectly uh, uh, good claim. I mean, uh, the key thought, of course, is that uh, when you combine inflationary theory with uh, uh, what's called quantum cosmology, you're unifying the four forces uh, of, of the universe um, in a space that's less than 10 to the minus 33 centimeters. Um, it does give rise to the possibility of, uh, of a multiverse. In other words, you can uh, actually get a condition where, you know, a false vacuum fluctuation could actually cough out, as it were, a, mm -hmm, a mm -hmm. bubble universe, mm -hmm. one of which could, could be like our own universe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, essentially that is a possibility. Uh, there is two problems. There are two problems. I mean, the first one is, you know, that um, there's no evidence uh, that that actually did occur. It, it, it's just a possibility. And um, some uh, configurations, particularly string theory, which is, uh, or M theory, which allows the multiverse to develop, has not yet uh, actually been confirmed. I know a lot of the stringers are, are, are anticipating it, but to be very frank, Right now, we, we do well, that's not... that's not the only way that multiple universes are generated. That no, no, along later. Uh, yeah. Uh, multiple universes developed out of the need to explain this universe because of the various problems of the horizon problem, and flatness yeah. problem, that inflation was the solution to that and the yes. necessary uh, product of inflation once you had that in multiple universes. So that right. was that was the, the step order of, of which this happened. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, then, and then yeah. string theory came along actually independently, and the two things looked like they're together, so the string theory, all the different possible universe and string theory oh, could be correct. populated by all these universes. So they uh, seem to work together. They don't have to. Yeah, they don't have to. Right. And that, and that's that's the point. You know, so are the, is there really a multiverse? We simply do not know. I mean, but but, but the evidence yeah. of physics seems to be that if you're going to have inflation in this universe, you almost need to have a multiverse. Give me the multiverse because that's the common expectation. Oh how yeah, does, no, I'll, how, I'll give it to you. How, how does that affect yeah. your your uh, the, yeah. the conclusion yeah, yeah. that you want a creator for what we got in here? Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, no, that's a, that's a good point. I'll give it to you. I mean, let's suppose there is a multiverse. Um, we then have two considerations that are pretty important. The first consideration is, does that multiverse itself need a beginning? Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, because it is an inflationary condition, uh, if, for example, the Board of Lincoln and Guth theorem of 2003 is correct, and therefore it would have an average Hubble expansion greater than zero, so a rate of expansion of the multiverse as a whole is mm -hmm. greater than zero, it would seem to suggest that it does. And so if it does have a beginning, you couldn't, you know, you'd have to explain, well, well, how did it get there if that beginning actually marks a definitive point? Mm -hmm. And so there are implications of creation just in the BVG theorem itself. The, the second thing, though, is there may have to be fine-tuning uh, in the multiverse itself as well. For example, in the, the first, uh, you know, set of theorems that came out with Andre Lind, you know, um, you know, bubble universes could almost cough, be coughed out sporadically. 
but then it was determined, you know, by several other physicists, well, no, that you have to be very careful there because if they bump into each other mm. or their gravitational impact, you know, within the multiverse affects one, each other, it could be devastating to the possibility of life forms forming. How, how does so, that bother us? Because there's so many, we're only going to be on the ones that exist anyway. Well, so. basically what they tried to postulate in order to solve the problem was a slow roll, Andre Lynn did and, and his colleagues, uh, you know, and that slow roll in turn uh, requires a set of parameters that, that have to be in the initial conditions of the universe, which set of parameters that the question arises, well, well, well how did they get there? You know, and, and it, does this seem like, again, a very selective set of multiversal constants? How are you uh, uh, leaning in terms of the multiverse is real or, or not real in terms of your uh, predisposition to believe that a god created it. Uh, uh, do you have uh, do you have a, a, a dog in this fact? Fight? No, no, I really don't. I'm totally agnostic because I think either way, you know, if the BVG theorem is correct, um, you know, you're going to have to have a beginning of the multiverse anyway. It's very difficult to get around fine tuning of that multiverse just for at least some sort of symmetrical rollout of the bubble universes. Um, so one way or another, you're, what we've done is moved the whole, you know, design problem back one step. I, I do think that's clear, but uh, for all intents and purposes, I still think the design argument is, is still there. And of course, if you don't have a multiverse, then you have the original question, you know, um, uh, how in the world um, did we get the values of the constants that we have? So I, I do think there there still are very significant uh, probative design features, even uh, granted uh, the multiverse. So I, I don't have a, a dog in the fight. I'm totally agnostic about whether one exists or not. Therefore, uh, in some, if we believe in a, a single universe, uh, it seems... Uh, uh, fairly evident that um, uh, it's an extraordinary coincidence uh, that we have the constants we have, which does indicate uh, not only fine-tuning, but some kind of design, some sort of selection uh, for the specialness of that universe. Alternatively, if there is a multiverse, um, I would still say that uh, uh, because th that multiverse has a beginning because of the Board of lincoln guth theorem, and also um, because it too seems to have um, you know, fine tuning in its initial parameters, that you are still looking at uh, design of that universe by some kind of intelligence. Um, it would be a weaker argument than the uh, single universe argument, uh, but nevertheless, it uh, it would uh, still be a significant argument in in favor of some kind of intelligent design.